Hello everybody, this is Tim here again, here with my review for Jurassic World. As you can see, I'm wearing a Joker t-shirt, getting ready for my Batman reviews, which will be coming pretty soon after this video. Um, but yeah, I figured I'd, I've seen Jurassic World recently, so I figured I'd go ahead and jump in and do a review for it first. So, uh, to answer your question first though, yes, I'll probably be doing the rest of the Jurassic Park movies somewhere down the line. But uh, until then, here's Jurassic World. So, it's been a long time since Jurassic Park 3. Uh, there's been talk of a Jurassic Park 4 for a long time. Although this movie pretty much ignores Part 2 and 3, or at least it doesn't reference them at all. Which pretty much can mean that they're in the same continuity, but the film just doesn't acknowledge them, their stories or whatever. Uh, it's still kind of silly, though, that they would even attempt another park after the disaster of the first movie. Well, actually, I take that back. It's not kind of silly because that does seem like something people would do, regardless of how bad the incident was the first time. Just start off, uh, just to jump into the movie here for Jurassic World. It's not uh, the be-all, end-all of blockbusters that some people might think it is. It is a block, block, but it is a blockbuster. This film is. It's a popcorn movie. It's actually really silly in some places, but it's fun for the most part. Just to jump into this film, most of the, the, actually the first half of this film really feels like just a repeat of the first movie. Just to jump into this film, you got Chris Pratt, Guardians of the Galaxy, he's fine. You got Bryce Dallas Howard, she's hot in the, in the movie. Uh, <laughs> she's fine in the movie too. Vincent D'Onofrio is, his character is the worst in the movie because his performance is, I love Vincent D'Onofrio, but his performance for his character is like so hammy. He plays like the over-the-top villain, like as soon as something goes wrong in the park, he like dials up like some government contractor on the phone, and he's like, yeah, it's like we might have a field test here, baby. Because basically in the movie, Vincent D'Onofrio is like this guy who works for the government. He's got Chris Pratt like training raptors, and he's, Vincent D'Onofrio is wanting to use him for like combat and to send out and hunt down like terrorists and stuff like that in caves and shit. It's kind of, kind of silly, but it does seem like something the government would do. And he's like a really scenery-chewing villain. Like when the evil dinosaur in the movie breaks into this place where all these like pterodactyls or predactyls or whatever are at, he's like, looks like the fox got in the hen house. That's just, I mean, he even looks like the facial expression I just made. He even looks like that, pretty much. Uh, and that's the exact line he says, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So he's really over the top, really hammy. He's pretty much the worst part of the movie for me. Uh, this is uh, pretty much a giant blockbuster popcorn B movie, really. Pretty much in this one, you got like uh, the park is reopened, everything's going all right, the, until they they decide to create like this super dinosaur though that has like superpowers. It's a dinosaur with superpowers, so right off the bat, that's extremely silly, but it's still fun. I mean, I'm just wanting to be entertained with a movie like Jurassic Park. Now, even the first movie, which has the most heart to it and has some decent science in it, still has some silly stuff in it. Um, but, uh, as far as this movie, they got the super dinosaur. Obviously, you know, it's going to break out and cause havoc. Once again, you got two kids in the movie again. Instead of a brother and sister like the first one, you got two brothers in this one. The older brother keeps hitting on other girls or whatever at the park, even though he has a girlfriend. Uh, so it kind of makes him a little unlikable. But at the same time, I'm, it's realistic, so I don't have a problem with it, really, because that's what teenage boys do. So, who gives a shit, really? Uh, but he keeps treating his little brother like shit in the movie until like way later on in the movie. Pretty much they get chased. The, the evil dinosaur, which is this super dinosaur, escapes and starts causing havoc in the in the jungle or whatever, the woods next to the park. And uh, Bryce Dallas Howard is trying to have it caught before it makes it to the main part of the park where all the people are so they don't have like a public relations nightmare on their hands. And so the two kids... These two kids are way more annoying than the kids from the first movie, <clears throat> just for the fact that the older kid treats the younger brother like shit. They get to a part of the park where they're supposed to go back, like because the park's closing pretty much, or something like that. Or, well, though the, the dinosaur's been released, and Bryce Dallas Howard um, has to like sent over the intercom for everybody to report back to the main part of the park. But instead of the two kids going back to the main part of the park, the older brother says. Fuck this. Let's go into this one place here in the woods where nobody's supposed to go, but let's go. So automatically you know right there that these kids are going to be attacked by the evil super dinosaur. 
get a weird cameo by Jimmy Fallon, who's the last person I ever expected to be in this movie. See, I don't think Jimmy Fallon's that funny, but he seems like a sweet guy in real life, so I don't really mind the dude. But he has a humorous little cameo. He plays himself pretty much, and he's on like this uh, video screen telling the kids about how protective this, uh, well, pretty much they're in this little device that like roams them around. The dinosaurs, it's like some kind of little bubble type thing with wheels on it or whatever. It like roams them around uh, the, uh, where the dinosaurs are at, uh, the plant eating dinosaurs. It's like a little bubble type device. Jimmy Fallon's on this video screen telling them like how safe the thing is or whatever. And of course, they're stupid white kids, so they go to the place that no one's supposed to go. <laughs> and another thing is their parents are getting a divorce. And they, the movie brings that up one time, and it's never brought up again, except for maybe like, oh wait, I take that back, it's brought up one more time, for like two friggin' seconds, where the little brother is sad because his parents are getting a divorce, and the older brother, who's a dick sucker, just looks at the little brother and says, you're being a pussy, I don't care that you're real young, just suck it up, get over it, lots of people get divorces, who gives a shit, basically is his reaction, and I'm like, What a dick! But anyway, <laughs> I don't give a shit. This guy dies. I, I'll take. I actually started warming up to him in the second half of the movie when he started. You know that him and his brother, his little brother, they start bonding more uh, over all the shit that's happening. So he starts. Uh, his protective instinct starts coming out finally. And he wants to actually take care of his brother. Uh, you finally get that. I'll be honest. This movie is a weird movie to rate because the first half of this movie ranges from okay, to good, to pretty good, to shit. That's pretty much, it never makes it to greatness. It's pretty much a retread of the first movie, except for the T-Rex hunting after the kids. It's uh, this new dinosaur. It's called the Indominus Rex, but I'm going to call it the Don't Screw With me Asaurus. So the Don't Screw With me Asaurus is basically hunting after these two kids. They're in this bubble thing like I was talking about, and the Don't Screw With me Asaurus is like bust, trying to bust through it, going straight down like that, trying to bust through it. And uh, it's pretty much just like the T-Rex scene from the original. So it's, a lot of this movie relies on nostalgia from the first movie way too much. There's too much nostalgia in this movie. It's cool for a while. And some of the nostalgia even later is cool. But at the end of the day, it's like, don't you have anything new here besides Super Dinosaur? Uh, Chris Pratt is cool. Um, he doesn't get enough to do for the first half. Honestly, most of the first half of this movie is the two kids, really. Uh, I expected Chris Pratt to be in a lot of this movie because Guardians of the Galaxy was such a big hit. I mean, he's in a lot of the first half, but he doesn't really do anything. Most of it's the two kids. But the problem with that is, you know the two kids ain't going to die because the movie's rated PG-13. So you know they're not going to get killed. So who gives a shit? <laughs> but anyway, and you get scenes like where the two kids are like running, they jump off a waterfall just right, just, just like right before the last second of the uh, don't screw with me asaurus trying to bite him and he like lunges out for dramatic tension trying to make you think it's gonna get him but it actually doesn't it's like wow big surprise there didn't see it coming that the kids were gonna get away <laughs> so the first half is just not super entertaining most of it's a retread yeah i mean you do get some funny dialogue with this guy that works at the park uh um, he has like some funny stuff where he's like wearing the original dress park uh, T-shirt uh, t or whatever of the original park, which is pretty funny, and Bryce Dallas Howard's like, don't you think that's in poor taste, talking about his shirt, uh, because people died at the original park, and he's like, yeah, I got this really cheap on eBay. I thought shit like that was funny. Um, another thing is, why are there holographic dinosaurs at this park? Like, there's holograms of dinosaurs at a dinosaur park. What's the point when there's real dinosaurs there? I don't get that shit at all. Um, Chris Pratt, like I was saying, is cool though. You get him like training the raptors. Uh, it's really neat. And I like how he's like, one of the raptors starts like doing something and he's like, hey, knock that shit off. And that was funny. I, I liked his attitude. He's, he's funny. He's fun in the movie. He's funny in the movie. He's charismatic in the movie. He's the best part of the movie. Um, one of the little kid in the movie, the little brother, is actually the kid from Iron Man 3. I didn't mind him in Iron Man 3. I don't mind him here. I don't even think the older brother is that bad of an actor, really, uh, for, for a kid actor. But he's still annoying for the first half of the movie. Pretty much the first half of the movie is two kids running away from the dinosaur and Chris Pratt trying to track the dinosaur down. 
or not the dinosaur, but trying to track the kids down. But Bryce Dallas Howard is also annoying for the first half of the movie too, because every time something happens, she's she refuses to do the right thing. Instead, she just wants to have the dinosaur caught and brought back because you know they they spent a lot of money on him. But later on, she has like she does have a character arc in the movie where she at first for the first half of the movie basically or most of the first half. Uh, her first act, anyway. She doesn't. She does. She doesn't see the dinosaurs as like living creatures. She doesn't really care about them. And then when she sees what the evil dinosaur has been doing, when well, they've tampered with the dinosaur, when well, they've made a dinosaur and made it more vicious and mean, it's made it like <clears throat> more aggressive, and it's like going around killing all the dinosaurs in the park, all the plant eaters, just killing them for fun, basically. Um, it's like Rambo dinosaur, really. <laughs> the way it evades people and shit. It can also turn invisible. Or camouflage itself, I mean, blending in with its environment. Uh, but it's like killing plant eater dinosaurs just for fun. And when Bryce Dallas Howard sees them all dead or whatever and sees one of them dying, she starts crying. So she actually does have a character arc in the movie. She starts off as kind of unlikable, but she becomes more likable after she, uh, has, after her character arc is complete, really. Um, another thing is, uh, so they're, after the first half, which ranges from good, where you get some all right scenes, you know, where uh, Chris Pratt is like running away from the Indominus Rex after it first breaks out, and he like rolls underneath a, a vehicle and cuts the gas line and pours the gas on himself so the so the he'll throw his scent off so the don't well don't screw him this horse I mean won't be able to know where he is. Um, but there's like this other guy out there with Chris Pratt who also run he's running away from the don't screw with this horse and he's like a fat worker a fat guy who works at the park. Automatically, you know he's dead. I mean, done. No tension whatsoever there. You know who's going to die in this movie right off the bat. There is no surprises. None when it comes to who's going to die in this movie and who's going to live. No surprises. So basically, there's no surprises in the movie. Except for the ending. The ending is a surprise. Uh, there's no... Uh, wait, I take that back. There's two surprises. Two things I didn't see coming in this movie. Other than that, that's it. Um... But, uh, but yeah, it's not really entertaining for the first half. I mean, it is entertaining, but at the same time, it doesn't knock your socks off. Most of the time, it's just good. Once in a while, it'll be pretty good, and then the rest of the time, it's shit. But then when the second half starts, it really kicks in. When the big dinosaur is, like, being chased after by a helicopter, and it, like, fucking busts into this birdcage-like thing with all these pterodactyls, and it, like... It, the big dinosaur is like super smart. It like makes all the pterodactyls fly towards the helicopter, um, and they cause the helicopter to crash and blow up. And the big dinosaur, I like the look of it. I like the look of it. I'm not blown away by the look of it because I expected something more of a mismatch between different dinosaurs because of all the dig DNA cross uh, crossings that they did to make it order or blendings. But uh, <coughs> but, it, but I still I still don't mind it. It's much cooler than Spinosaurus from Part Three, um, and uh, it's and I don't mind it for most of the movie. It's entertaining enough. It's a it's a good dinosaur. It's a cool, good new dinosaur. It's not amazing, but it is good with some cool factors, with its special abilities like turning invisible, invisible and stuff, or camouflage. I mean, but it doesn't camouflage enough. I'm pretty sure it only does it like once in a movie, which is a let down. But anyway, once those pterodactyls get released and they fly straight to the park where everybody's at, and they start killing people left and right, man, and dragging them up in the air. They drag this one chick up in the air and, like, drop her straight down as she's falling. Another one, like, grabs her and, like, jerks her right back up and then drops her down in the water with this big-ass underwater dinosaurs at. You've seen it in the previews. Uh, I know that for a fact that everyone has seen this thing in the previews. Um, this big-ass underwater dinosaur, and she's down in the water. And, uh, like, as the pterodactyl's, like, trying to fly back up with her, I believe it's got a hold of her. The big-ass, like, underwater dinosaur just, like, jumps up out of the water and eats the friggin', like, pterodactyl and her both, I believe. At the same time, it's like, damn! <laughs> that underwater dinosaur's a bad mother. But, uh, the don't screw with me uh, basically, they just, uh, Chris Pratt decides to... Well, before I forget, you get mentioned in off here every time something horrible happens, he's, like, looking at the camera going... Like, he's so ecstatic because he just knows he's going to get to use this as an excuse to do a field test with the Raptors to test them out to see how good they are in actual combat, I guess. See how good they are at locating stuff. 
And so he finally talks to Chris Pratt, and he's in the Raptors. So you get the cool scene in the trailer, and Chris Pratt is like riding, uh, <laughs> with the riding on a, I believe it was a motorcycle, with the Raptors like, well, uh, either a motorcycle or a four wheeler one, I forgot. But uh, him riding to the woods with the Raptors like all around him and shit. And there's this one main Raptor called Blue, who's like good friends with Chris Pratt, really, in the movie, or or uh, like a Chris Pratt's comrade, really, in the movie. And, uh, but, uh, what, I didn't see this coming. The Raptors get up to the Don't Screw With Meosaurus, but the Don't Screw With Meosaurus is also part Raptor. So it becomes the new her, the new leader of the pack of the Raptors. <coughs> and it, like, tells them to kill all the humans, so they all, so the Raptors turn on the people and start killing them all, which is pretty funny. And, uh, once again, uh, once again, it's much more entertaining here in the second half than it was in the first half. You get the cool turn acting scene, finally. It feels like it takes forever to get to this, though. Uh, because the first half feels like it drags for a while. And then you get the cool raptor stuff and then uh, killing all the people. And the, the, one of the raptors are like chasing after this, uh, after the vehicle that has the two kids in the back and Bryce Dallas Howard is driving it. And they got like this electro shocker prod thing and they like uh, electro, electric cattle prod type thing. And they like, the older brother, I believe, gets the raptor in the face with it and knocks it down. And they're like busting through the side of the windows trying to get Bryce Dallas Howard. Uh, that's all entertaining that stuff is. Uh, they managed to get away, though, of course, the kids are not going to die in this movie. The kids of Bryce Dallas Howard are not going to die, now there is Chris Pratt. Uh, Raptor eventually eats Vincent D'Onofrio, no big surprise there, you knew he was going to die from the moment he walked on screen. I mean, this is a type of character that's so hammy in the movie, he might as well have villain tattooed on his forehead. <laughs> and then, pretty much at the end of the movie, the Raptors have Chris Pratt cornered, and, uh, Chris Pratt just like talks him out of it, uh, reintroduces himself <clears throat> as the leader of the herd, really, or the pack of the Raptors. Then the Don't Screw With Me Saurus shows up, the Raptors start fighting it, but it starts winning, and it, it pretty much wins the battle, kills all the Raptors, except for, uh, well, except for Blue, but I'll get to that. Uh, and then, uh, then the Raptor, I mean, then the, the Don't Screw With Me Saurus, I mean, gets ready to kill the kids. But Bryce Dallas Howard lets the T-Rex out, baby! And this ending is put here deliberately to redeem the T-Rex after part, part three's horrible fight with the Spinosaurus. Uh, the T-Rex gets released, just comes barging in, busts through a Spinosaurus skeleton. I thought that was great. And he starts fighting the uh, Don't Screw With Me Asaurus. But uh, <coughs> the T-Rex is pretty much winning the fight. But the Don't Screw With Me Asaurus gets the T-Rex down. And he's getting ready to kill the T-Rex. But then comes the Raptor. Blue, he comes back, baby. And, like, jumps the Don't Screw With Me Asaurus. Then the T-Rex starts fighting it with the Raptor. They're, like, tag-teaming it, baby. Uh, this is pretty much when the B-movie greatness sets in. And the T-Rex is, like, slamming the Don't Screw With Me Asaurus, like, up against the wall and shit. And the Raptor's, like, jumping on his head, clawing the hell out of its head. And the T-Rex is, like, owning its ass. And the Raptor is, too. And they, uh, they because they're double-teaming it, and they knock it over and towards the water. And right when you think the fight is going to keep going, big surprise, the, the fucking uh, uh, underwater dinosaur comes busts up out of the water and drags the Don't Screw With Me Asaurus into the water and kills it pretty much by jumping it and dragging it into the water. So Don't Screw With Me Asaurus is dead. The T-Rex looks at the raptor like, my cat pretty much like, what up, motherfucker? <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> but uh, anyway, and uh, the T-Rex like walks off into the woods. Then the Raptor looks at Chris Pratt, and uh, he's pretty much like, see ya, homie. And then the Raptor goes off into the woods. Some people will probably think it's silly. It is kind of silly, but it's so much fun. The ending, the even with the second half being as good as it is, it's still not anything mind-blowing. This, this movie, I will tell you, never, never reaches the level of the first one. It only comes close with this ending, with the Raptor and the T-Rex double-teaming this new dinosaur. That's the only time. And that's the best part of the movie. And this second half of the movie is what raises the movie up to four stars, by far. This is what raises it up to four stars. So like I said, it's a hard movie to rate because it's kind of wishy-washy. Because if, I was just, if the whole movie would have just kept up just what it was doing with the first half, I would have pretty much just rated it like pretty good, nothing to rush out to see, but pretty good or just good. But with this second half and this big, huge galactic, I mean this big, huge epic battle at the end, Raises it up to great, a great popcorn movie. Not perfect, but the best sequel. It's the best sequel. Um, 
So yeah, it's the best sequel. All in all, nothing to write home about. I mean, but that ending with the, the three-way dinosaur fight is the coolest of any of the movies. That's the only part that raises it up to being on the same level as the first one. That ending is the only time it comes close to being on the same level as the first one. But still the coolest ending to any of the movies. Though. But, uh, yeah, all in all, it's a four-star movie. Nothing amazing. The human characters, once again, are really not very interesting. And, I mean, the human characters in this movie are not very interesting, but the dinosaurs are the stars, so honestly, who gives a shit? They're passable enough for a popcorn movie. Once again, Chris Pratt's the best part. Bryce Dallas Howard is decent. <coughs> Another thing is that they try to force a romance into the movie between Bryce Dallas Howard and Chris Pratt, where you find out they went on one date once before, like a year or two ago, or, or a couple months ago, or something like that. And then right in the middle of the movie, it's one of those horrible scenes in a movie, or right in the middle of the movie when everybody's like dying around them, and they could die at any second. He grabs her and kisses her, and I'm like, oh, God, I hate shit like that. That's almost as bad in a, as in a, that's almost as, scenes like that are almost as bad as scenes in a movie when something really bad happens and a character looks up to the sky and goes, ah, I hate shit like that. <laughs> but, yeah, you get stupid shit like that. I hate forced romances in movies, and they don't have very amazing chemistry together. I mean, because they're good actors, they do, they kind of buy it like a little bit, but because it seems so forced in the movie with the unwanted kiss that shouldn't have been there, it just comes off as stupid and not needed. But yeah, all in all, it's a four-star movie because it's, it's a really fun popcorn movie. The second half is anyway, and the first half is kind of boring and dull, but still ranges from good to pretty good. But yeah, all in all, I'd recommend watching it. If you like the first one, and if, you, if you like the first, if you like the, all three of them, all three of the first Jurassic Parks, I definitely recommend watching it. Um, but yeah, it's not a bad movie. I'd recommend seeing it in theaters. But I really don't think this movie deserved to make it as much money as it did. But I am glad that it did make a lot of money, though. But I really don't think it deserved to make as much as it has made, though. It's not like the greatest movie ever or nothing. Uh, it's, not even, it's not even in the top ten greatest movies. I wouldn't even put it in the top twenty. But it is a great popcorn movie. With the second half, it becomes a great popcorn movie, especially with the ending that he has. So, yeah, all in all, I'd recommend watching it if you're a fan, which I'm a fan of Jurassic, Jurassic Park movies, too. I love the first one. Love it. Uh, but, yeah, it's still not anywhere near the level of the first movie, but a great sequel. As a sequel, if you go into this movie with realistic, realistic expectations and not expect it to be the greatest movie ever, then, yes, uh, then I don't think you'd be disappointed in it. You might be bored for the first half a little bit, but I don't think you'd be disappointed with the movie as a whole. At least I wasn't. Um, but yeah, all in all, great sequel, but still nowhere near on the same level as the first one. But I would recommend watching it. So yeah, I'll see you guys again with the uh, Batman franchise reviews.